Hello everybody, my name is Ace. I will be your narrator, honorary voice actor, and scared companion this evening as we continue Burrows. I'm not exactly entirely sure what happened last time. I did just get back from vacation. I had a blast, by the way. Um, it was a great time in North Carolina. I do remember uh, a hero getting a hard third wields and it upset me quite a bit. Uh, but we followed after him and he confessed to Grey and asked kind of where things lie now. Um, I'm so excited to continue the entire time I was on vacation. I was like, oh, why didn't I record more before I, before I left? But, you know, here we are. We can make up for lost time and let's get right back on into it. I've been kind of mulling over this choice um, ever since we left off last time. And, you know, the choice isn't super hard for me, especially considering that I'm ace. But I feel like even so, in this situation, when someone reveals this kind of heavy information to you and is being vulnerable and putting their faith in you, I feel like immediately trying to, you know, swoop in and do R-rated things is a bit just insensitive and tactless. I think that if Hiro wanted something to happen, he would ask. And I feel immediately after we're unleashing all this information and stuff, I would want to be consoled. I wouldn't want someone to immediately thrust themselves upon me. And I think it would just be really uncomfortable. I think Hiro would not want that. So I'm just going to offer companionship. I beckon for him to come back to me, arms wide open. None of that matters. All I care about is being a good friend to you. He looks away unconvinced. You were very brave to tell me, Hero. I feel honored. But I want you to know, this doesn't change the way I already felt about you. Are you sure? Positive. I don't think I could have liked you any more than I already do. You goofball. That is so pretty. He treads over to me, wrapping his arms around me, half crying and half giggling. I knew I could trust you. Hey, your stitches. Jesus, guy. I pat him on the head. This is the way things should be. I just... Hmm? With a potty like this, I knew I had a feeling you wouldn't be. Anyway, I'm happy we can at least be friends. I hold his shoulder tight, looking him dead in the eyes. Hold up. That is absolutely not the reason. There's nothing about you I dislike. Your body is perfect. But you're more than just your body. You're a hero. That's exactly why I picked this option. This is exactly how I would have approached the situation. And you're the one I swore to protect when I made that choice. Nothing will change that. Gray. He wipes away a final tear and squeezes me tight. You're exactly who I was hoping for. Then stay with me. He nods into my chest. <sighs> I think the worst of it is past. With a stretch, he smiles back at me, looking like his usual happy self. Come now, let's not spoil our bath. Let's enjoy ourselves. Right. With that last hurdle finally crossed, we relax and let the warm waters wash over us. I feel so close to him now, as if we'd known each other for years. So, you haven't told anyone else? Besides me and Petra, I mean? Mm. There was one person back at home who knew, but that's a story for another day. I nod. Talking about his past must be painful, given who he is today. 
Only if you feel like sharing it. I'm willing to move at whatever pace you're comfortable with. Thanks. Though, while we're on the topic... He gestures to his genitals. Okay. That's a little forward. Ah. Uh, I'm sure you noticed the strength of the pheromones I produce. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> I already forgave you. Foxes, as you know, have an abundance of complex sexual pheromones. Maybe the most out of any living species. Thus, it's very difficult to hide one's personal information when around creatures who pick up on our scent. That makes sense. I nod, recalling the sensation I got from being around Gene when he was horny, which was often. Gene when he is horny sounds like a whole different monster. And to make matters worse, the pheromones of a vixen are twice as potent. Twice? Yowch. Oh. Oh. Oh no. He nods. No matter how well I blend in, chemically speaking, most males will recognize me as female. And that often leads to... He grips my arm. Oh, he grips his arm. Well, let's just say there have been some close calls. I won't let that happen. I believe you. It wasn't a big issue when I was only among other foxes in my village. But here... Points to an erection I didn't even notice I had. It's as powerful as the scent of blood to a hungry beast. I've tried many methods to lessen it, even going as far as to scrub my intimate areas with rubbing alcohol. What? Ow. Yeah, what? You winces at my sudden outburst. It stung, but what else could I do? Nobody would accept me if the truth got out. I'm just lucky Fritz set me up with a Zeppelin. The smell of machinery... <laughs> Why did I say it like that? The smell of machinery covers it up quite well. I don't like the idea of him harming himself just to blend in. We both know the dangers men pose, especially men with power. Ain't that the truth? We'll find a better solution, promise. <laughs> Thanks, Gray. On that note, I think it's time we return to that big lug and resume our foraging. Oh shit. How long has it been? Hmm. Roughly an hour, maybe? Fuck. I hope he's doing alright. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I heard him pleasuring himself not long after we left. Way to go, Atri. Real tactful. Oh. Damn, his hearing is scary. Anyway, let's get on with it. We exit the springs and I shake off as much water as I can. Hero finds a patch of sandy dirt and gives himself a quick dusting, absorbing most of the excess moisture easily. That's a handy trick. Think it'll work on me. Sorry, it's a wire brush fur thing. Yours is too absorbent. Aw. Disappointed in my lackluster fur, we head back to the river. Atri is exactly where we left him, though he looks rather pleased with himself. Hey. Ah, so you finally returned. Sorry for taking so long. Yes, sorry. <laughs> You're quite alright. I rather enjoy my own company, and it's a beautiful day. He rises out of the water, his sculpted wet body glistening in the sunlight. <clears throat> uh, uh. I bump him with an elbow, and he stops looking at Atri's junk. Oh. Hero want to apologize. He bows, taking Atri by surprise. Hero, not angry at you. You been very nice. Atri scratches his chin, bemused. 
I appreciate it, little one. Hopefully next time we can all bathe together. <laughs> of course, of course. Come on, let's get dressed and start looking for those ingredients. Righto. Getting dressed, my shirt feels crisp and cool on my freshly washed body. Adri takes a bit longer, his boots and tights having a myriad of intricate straps and buckles that slow down the process. I don't even know why he bothers wearing clothes at this point. If he wants to feel the fantasy, let him. You just like watching him struggle to squeeze into those leggings. Yep. <laughs> it is quite entertaining. We nod in unison, finding solidarity in this new spectator sport. Goodness, you two like to ogle. Am I a mere piece of meat to you? <laughs> meat good, important for diet. <laughs> We're growing boys. He sighs and clips the last of his many belts closed, bringing our little peep show to a close. Now that's, oh, now that that's out of the way, let's begin searching for those elusive ingredients. I believe it was Foxglove, Water Drop Ward, and Burdock. Saying the names out loud, I have no clue what any of those look like. Hmm. Foxglove usually grow, usually grow by foot of the hill. Oh, I forgot he's speaking in German, so I got to do it slightly worse. Hmm. Foxglove usually grow by foot of hill. It prefers shade. He points eastward to a ridge in the near distance. I check there. The fox knows where to find Foxglove. How fortuitous. Mm. Come on, Atri. He just started to like you. I never said I was a comedian. Regardless, there's likely some of that dropwort growing in the marsh where that river termi terminates. So I will search there. I'm trying so hard to to not make him too British because he's not British, but it's just what's coming out. So we're gonna have to deal with it. That just leaves the burdock. Is it burdock or burdock? I think it's burdock. I'm sorry if it's burdock. Any idea where I could find that? Or, uh, what it might look like. Hero sighs, reaching into his tool belt to produce a small, leather-bound journal. He undoes the latch and flips through its pages, each section marked with a colored tab. Here, look. The page shows a purple flower with intimidating spines poking out of its center. If it were anyone else, I'd accuse them of making up an imaginary plant. It grow in on roadside and turn soil. Probably closer to hiking path. All right. I'm nervous about splitting up, given the supposed meddling fairies who have decided to make me their target. Without a tree to guide me, wearing that blindfold is a death sentence. He shoots me a confident smile. Crap, it must have been written all over my face. Worry not, Gray. Remember what I showed you before, and you should be able to overcome anything. Eh? I'll explain later. Well, I'll try to explain. Sorry, something was on my phone. But thanks, Atri. I'll do my best. We meet back here in it. At, okay, it's so hard to speak broken. We meet back here at 30 minutes. If trouble, whistle. All right, then. I'm off. He heads back to the river, and I look at Hero. He nods, sliding his goggles over his eyes, and gives me a quick hug before jocking off. I fucking love him. All right, this should be easy. We're just looking for a little flower, right? 
Kira said that the hill was towards the east, so the way back to the trail should be south, I think. I probably should have asked before everyone left. Whatever. I can't keep relying on them for everything. The section of the forest is full of chaotic growth, making it hard to find any semblance of a walking path. Come on, Gray. Just pick a direction and stick with it. With that notion in mind, the seemingly random shapes surrounding me start to shift into recognizable paths. Branches twist and bend into a labyrinthian of walls. Leaves line the edges of the path like a sidewalk to a street. Before I know it, I'm back to the trail that leads to the village. I did it. Okay. Time to sniff out some poisonous po posies. Hero said turned soil. So I should probably look closer to man-made structures. I can't recall seeing any of those out here aside from that creepy hut. Yeah, no. I definitely don't want to go back there by myself. Maybe the village gates? No, if we grew that close by, I... Oh, if it grew that close by, I doubt Petra would bother sending us to fetch it. I'll have to go further south. I can actually enjoy the walk now that there's a level path. It's hard to believe these are the same woods that nearly killed us yesterday. Nature's beliefs aside, could something else be at play? Mere hallucinations can't be that vivid. The Todd always makes himself known, so I can't blame everything on him, and Virgil's been awfully quiet since he dropped me here. Is he just watching to see how I'll react? Who would find entertainment in something so... banal? I am actually unfamiliar with that word. I'm assuming it just means negative, but that's like word of the day material right there. Let me double check so I don't miss out on any context. But now... Oh, lacking in originality has to be obvious and boring. Ah. So he's basically saying who would find entertainment in something so boring. You're not that boring. I'd say the story's been pretty good so far, sir. Maybe these woods are full of noxious gas and the locals pin the blame on fairies. You know, that's actually a solid point. But that doesn't explain why Hero was unaffected. Ugh, speculation is pointless. Just focus on finding the little flowers. Just remember what they... Huh? What's that up ahead? I rub my eyes to make sure they aren't playing tricks on me. An entire row of burdock is neatly planted next to other brightly colored plants on either side of the path. Getting closer, I see tiny wooden posts stuck in the dirt. They have dates carved into them, along with other strange symbols. Someone's personal garden? All the way out here? There's no gate or anything guarding these from intruders, not to mention they all seem to be wild flowers. I don't trust it, even a percentage. I don't think whoever left this here would mind if I took a few when there's so many. For all they know, it could be some wild animals doing. I feel like you shouldn't do that. I crouch down and reach towards my prize carefully. Oh, I crouch down and reach toward my prize. Careful to avoid the spines when... I don't know the voice. God damn it. I hate this. What the? Hey! Huh? Before I can even turn around, a shot rings out. Disturbing the tranquility of the forest. The bullet whizzes past me, exploding a patch of dirt a few yards away. Turn around. Slow. Oh, a gruff male voice. Okay, I wasn't too far off. Fuck, fuck, fuck. I'm sorry, I... He cocks his gun. Oh... Do as I say. I nod and nervously inch back around on my knees, hands raised. Good. Good. Now what were you doing messing with my flowers, boy? I dare not look up, knowing that gun is pointed straight at me. 
All I can tell is that he's heavy set and wearing well worn hunting gear. I didn't know it was yours. You think that's an excuse? No. You know what they did to thieves in the olden days? A large hand reaches down and tightens it around my wrist. We cut these off. Please. I'm sorry. Worse to my feet, I finally get a glimpse of who my attacker is. A black ram. Horns curled into a menacing spiral. His breath stinks of alcohol and tobacco. And I don't think he's had a shower in days. I've never seen one of your kind around these woods. Who are... Put him down! Eh? Oh, eh. He drops me, relaxing his posture as the others run up on us. Hero skirts around him, sliding through the dirt like a baseball player to get me. Oh, what do we have here? He chuckles, reaching down towards us. Hero growls at him, biting at his fingers. Ah, it's one of Atreus' friends. Ulfwin. Oh, it's this guy. I saw um, Nico drawing this guy in, um, in voice chat and Discord. Recognition flashes through his eyes, and he finally lowers his gun, turning to face Atri with a shrug. Heroes pass. Ah, it's you. So these two oddballs are with you? He nods, expression stone cold. They're my friends. Why did it? That was so British. They're my friends. <laughs> like, come on. They're my friends. I've observed enough to know they're trustworthy folk. Say it ain't so. They stare at each other for a while. The tension is thick enough to cut with a knife. Suddenly they drop the act and start laughing, embracing each other in a jovial hug. Off on you, son of a bitch. You look good. Likewise, boy. Looks like you've been faring well. What is happening right now? I'm with you, hero. I don't know. I'm still shivering. The mood is so chaotic right now. It feels like anything could happen to us. Atri notices our visible concern and brings his little powwow to help us to our feet. Ha, huh, sorry. Gray, Alfwin is actually a good friend of mine. He was just trying to scare you. He wouldn't hurt a fly. <laughs> that is literally Cap. <laughs> the ram bows, albeit a mock apology as he's still laughing under his breath. Had I known you were with the elk, I'd have explained, but you really can't trust strangers. Especially out here. He points behind him with his hard-capped thumb. I own a few acres of land out here. There's no judge or jury, so I have to defend it myself. And to be fair, I saw you ruminating about it, so it's clear you knew. Oh, rum ruminating, I believe. So it's clear you knew it was wrong to steal those flowers, Paws. Yeah, fair enough. I don't think a few missing flowers is grounds for murder, but under his ownership, all punishments are technically at his discretion. We were given the task of finding some medicinal herbs, and Gray here was instructed to search for product by the road. Ah... Guess he wasn't looking too hard, then. There's plenty of the wild stuff up yonder. I'm trying to get a consistent voice for Atri that isn't entirely British. So you're gonna have to bear with me for a bit on Atri. I'm sure he tried to look there first, didn't you, lad? Eh. <laughs> uh. Did you? I've never done this before. All three shake their heads and sigh. My face is hot with shame. Anyway, if you're Atri's kin, then I suppose I could spare some herbs. Just use them responsibly, okay? He crouches down next to us and pulls out some tiny shears. 
and after a few snips, he drops a handful of them next to me. Careful with the barbs. Thanks. He stands up, groaning in pain as his back pops. You know, it's been a good while since you came over for lunch. Hey, tree. I got some special meat. <laughs> okay. Won't you and your pals jo here join me? We have to... Oh, that sounds delightful. I haven't had meat in ages. My stomach growls before I can protest. Here shoots me a worried glance and I hold his hand. Atri won't let him hurt us. Let's just play along. Okay. My cottage is just over yonder. Come on, gentlemen. 